Howdy again. I'm talking to you on the evening of Maundy Thursday, which may or may not mean much to some of you, and which probably means that for many of you, you'll actually be hearing this the morning of Good Friday. And that's okay. I know for myself, though, I used to wonder, what is Monday Thursday anyway? Because I didn't know that the name was Maundy Thursday, not Monday Thursday. But all the same, in case some of you are wondering, what am I talking about anyway? What is Maundy Thursday? Well, Maundy Thursday is the commemoration of two significant events that happened on the night Jesus was betrayed. The first was, of course, the Last Supper. We also revisit these events when we celebrate the Lord's Supper. The second, and less well thought of, was Jesus washing his disciples' feet. John tells us about this. The other Gospels simply tell us about the Last Supper. Curiously, the other Gospels don't tell us about Jesus washing his disciples' feet. Only John tells us that. Maybe it was because they had been arguing over who was greatest right before that. Maybe because none of them seems to have been willing to take the lowest position and wash the feet uh, on gathering together. Maybe there was still a little bit of embarrassment. It's amazing how very small we can be. Regardless, Jesus showed them what love was by washing their feet. Now, washing feet was a potentially nasty business, one done by typically the servant with the least amount of seniority because the roads were paved with, well, dirt. And the exhaust from vehicles at that time was manure. And walking around, you at least got your feet dusty. And depending upon what conditions were, well, there could be a good deal of nastier stuff that got on your feet than that. And they were gathered to celebrate the Passover, which is a holy night, and they reclined on couches for the meal, but apparently their feet still needed some attention. And Jesus himself took off his outer garment and wrapped in a towel and washed their feet. And he told them, eventually, after some other discussion, really explaining the heart of what this is about, uh, a new command I give to you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. And the word mandi is from the Latin word for command. And today specifically commemorates that a different kind of command that we love one another has been given to us. And love for one another, really caring for one another, is an uncommon thing. How uncommon? Well, What's the test to show whether or not you're a disciple of Jesus? That you can know and explain a lot of doctrine? Well, that's important. Uh, that you either do or don't do a whole list of things that spiritual people do? When Jesus said to love one another, he said, By this all men will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. Now, that's not to say that doctrine is not important. It is. That's not to say that the life we've been given in Christ doesn't have things that belong to it that we should do, and there are things that it don't belong to it and we shouldn't do but faced with all of those things things of doctrine things of spiritual seeming maturity if we do those things and speak of those things but have not love we are simply making noise love in contrast is from the heart it is patient it is kind it seeks the best for the other it rejoices in the best for the other like jesus rejoices in the best for me and you Pray for the grace to take up the commandment by which the world will know that we are Jesus' disciples. Live into each other's lives. In the midst of that, remember that sometimes the best way we show love to each other is just by being willing to listen. I say this realizing so many of you do this and do it well, and it inspires me. And I see the extraordinary love and care that you have for each other but continue to encourage each other to even greater care and concern for each other, with God's love holding us all together. That's what I have on a Monday Thursday for you. Remember, no man is an island, and you don't have to be either, so call, write, wave at someone in the park, and continue to draw together and love one another during this time of isolation. Shalom.